Hello and welcome to the Ada Scotland Festival 2021. My name is Ian Harris and I'm from the Robert Gordon School of Computing and I'm going to today show you something cyber security that might inspire you. One of the things that always surprises people is quite how often cyber attacks occur. So this is a little chart of data from the UK government that shows how many times a day, month, year, a business or a charity notices that it's under cyber attack. Um, so the, the interesting part here is that 13% of businesses, 10% of charities are able to identify that some sort of cyber attack happens every day. Now, maybe that's a phishing email, spam, but maybe it's something a bit more sinister, a bit more uh, targeted directly at their network. So these things are going on all the time. And that's one of the things that we need to be aware of. What does that perhaps mean? Just any one of those attacks can cause some fairly serious damage to the business, to the customers, financial or um, legal. So this is some data from uh, recent history, last couple of years of cyber attacks and how much data was stolen or leaked during the attack. Um, so some of you most recently may be aware of the Twitch uh, attack. So that was just in October this year, just a few days ago. 10 million of their customer records were stolen and also some source code, financial data, things like that. Uh, other notable, one, notable ones on here, uh, Microsoft with 250 million customer records. And uh, now these were apparently online over 14 years uh, without password protection. We may expect Microsoft to know how to deal with these things. Facebook, uh, multiple times uh, they appear on this list of incidents of cyber attack. Um, and that's something in the region of a billion records there, um, and of, of which one of them, around 20% of their Facebook users had their phone number uh, leaked in the data. So with these attacks happening every day, and each one may cause some kind of situation like this, it's a pretty serious environment that we need to understand and take care of. But when we say happening every day, what does that actually look like? Uh, some of you may have seen clips like this before. Uh, this is a recording from just a couple of days ago, so early October. Um, and this company, SonicWall, they provide uh, cybersecurity gateway firewall type devices that are monitoring the companies, at least, that pay for it. So in this case, they've got a number of deployments around the world and they're capturing in real time the alerts that are occurring. So as you can see in this uh, early October recording here, this is real time. This isn't speeded up. It's not some sort of um, time delayed uh, or uh, time, cap time lapse photography. Uh, so these are the real time attacks that were happening. And we can see incidents happening there quite a lot in North America, Europe at this particular time of day, um, not so often in uh, the Far East, but still a reasonable rate of constant cyber attacks and only just on the companies that have bought the product from SonicWall here to, to highlight what traffic's going on. Different colors represent different types of attack, uh, sizes of the lines, different volume of attack. Now that's all very well, but I'm not able to have this sort of infrastructure. So I wanted to create a demonstration that worked in a similar way, but with things that were available to me. So first of all, how does the internet sort of work? Well, each computer has an IP address, like your house has an address, but then each service or um, access to a computer will have a port number. So each computer or server will have an IP address and port associated with what it does. So a web server, for example, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, will typically have an IP address and then port 80, uh, port 443 for secure connections, but there's lots of other services the ones that are most commonly targeted in, in that kind of demo, uh, often things to do with industrial control systems, authentication processes, uh, web servers, email. So we'll try and recreate a similar process where we can watch multiple computers and multiple ports to see what they're doing. So how am I gonna do that from, uh, from here in Aberdeen? So I've got my one computer sitting here in Aberdeen and using a VPN, more commonly used for uh, securing your network connection or providing a geolocation service. I'm going to use that geolocation service, but then remove all the cybersecurity firewall type of features from it 
and deliberately place computers around the world that are vulnerable to attack and offering multiple ports, multiple services. So I'll put one in the United States. I'll put one here in the UK, probably London, uh, one in Europe, probably Germany, and their fourth one over in India to try and give me a geographic kind of timeline spread so that I can hopefully get some activity. It's happening often enough, I should see something. So what's that look like in reality? So I have here my four computers. I'm using virtualized infrastructure here and I've got my VPNs ready to go. So I'll connect to Los Angeles in this one, uh, United Kingdom on this one, Germany on this one, and then India on the last one. We'll let those connect just to prove I've got uh, connections around the world. And each one of these should end up with a unique IP address that represents a computer in that part of the world. Of interest here, I'm not advertising these to people. I'm not listing them online anywhere. I'm not publicizing that these are available. So there we go. We've got four connected computers. And just to prove the point, I'll just demonstrate what my IP address is on each of these. So I have uh, a 69167 address here for Los Angeles, a 178208 address for here in the United Kingdom, a 12890 for Germany, and then a 1289060 in India. Very close address, but the way these are split up, um, individual sections of this might be owned by a different company, different organizations around the world. So I'm fairly confident this really is India um, and this will be Germany and uh, UK and United States. So that's now just for Windows PCs, similar to you use at home, albeit I have removed all the security from these. And then I'm going to run what we call a honeypot service. Um, so this is some simple Python that I've created that will uh, simulate having connections available for uh, other services and people can connect to them. So uh, simple bits of Python. I've got a connection on port or an available service on port 22, port 80, uh, 445, 139, 3389, uh, 443, 53, 23, 21, 25. It would be unusual for a computer to run all these services but what this lets me do is have, in effect, lots of open doors and windows for cyber criminals to perhaps try and access my computers. So now, at this point, I'm really just relying on the internet doing what it does, uh, that somebody is going to try and have a look at my computers. Somebody is scanning the internet, trying to find available computers to hack into. Uh, what I've noticed over the years is that certain ports are more common than others. So what we'll do is we'll just arrange these windows to try and get the one that's most commonly attacked, usually things like 23 and 22. So let's put 23 at the top on each of these. Uh, let's see if we can find our 23s. And 25, 23, there we go, put that one to the top. And another one here. Oh, so very quickly, uh, that was the space of only a minute or two there. Uh, already on my port 23 in the United Kingdom, a couple of people, a couple of other computers in the world have tried to connect to my port 23 in the UK. Immediately, to me, that's a bit suspicious. They've no reason to connect to this computer. They don't know it exists. But something or somebody out there has had a look to see if my computer on port of a computer on port 23 is available. Uh, we'll leave that to the front and we'll just get our Los Angeles computer in the same way. Oh, I can see something in the background there. Let's uh, minimize it. Okay, so my computer in Los Angeles has had somebody uh, attack it on port 23, but also interestingly, just while we're here on port 80 as well. So that's my web server port. So within a matter of a few moments there, Already people are trying to connect and uh, access and see what's available. They won't get anything, the way the Python is set up, it shuts down the connection immediately, but I'm already beginning to capture that data. Now that's all very interesting and um, kind of shows activity, yes, but it doesn't really inspire or engage or demonstrate some of the things that we do at Robert Gordon's University. So I then decided 
I wanted to visualize this in a bit more of a fun way. Um, so with the help of a couple of my students, uh, we developed a plugin to a, a piece of software called MindTest. And the idea is, and there we go, um, it will try and represent the incoming cyber attacks in a case of uh, zombies and sheeps and goats um, and, and chickens. Um, so as attacks come in, I will see a, a status message appear on this screen that somebody is trying to access something and then the different monster to, to try and represent what's going on. It's a little bit of fun, but the idea is to try and give a, a real time visualization of how often this happens. Now, as I say, I'm just relying at this point on the internet doing its thing and somebody having a look to see what computers they find. Over the years, I've realized it depends on time of day, day of the week. Uh, there are professional companies out there uh, who, whose job is, I say companies, uh, organizations whose job it is to commit cyber crime and they will work office hours. Um, so this activity can come and go depending on what's going on. But there we go, it's another line item coming in and I'll have a monster appear somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, oh, probably behind me there. Um, so again, you know, these are uh, people who are doing this as their kind of career and they will be working to a schedule to do this. So times of days can change. But in a matter of a few minutes there, in the sake of this simple presentation, that we can see there are constant threats uh, attacking our computers around the world. So it's very um, important that we understand these things. Don't do what I've done and turn off all your security and present your computers to the internet without firewalls and antivirus, because uh, these attacks every few minutes will be looking for vulnerable PCs. There's another one uh, looking for machines to uh, attack and uh, try and connect to. Uh, so do take care. Turn on your firewalls. Oh, there we go. A bunch of sheep uh, landing on me. Uh, do make sure that you're not um, doing all these things that I do and make sure that you're using all the good security behaviors and software and patching your computers. So thank you very much. I hope that was uh, at least an interesting little highlight of how often these things are happening and uh, enjoy the rest of the Ada Festival. Thank you very much.